can you hear me now? Okay, good. So let's get going. Uh, I'm trying. I will try to explain something very complex in only 20 minutes. So uh, well, let's not waste time. Uh, so first of all, this talk is not going to be about uh, the miraculous things that you can achieve by optimizing your. Uh, server installation. It's not about extracting uh, extra transactions or extra uh, speed or anything like that. It's basically just going to pop up the hood and, uh, well, look inside the, the engine that MySQL is. So this is why I chosen this background here. A little bit about me. So I am, I've been, well, with this community forever, really grateful about it. I, uh, uh, it's been a life-changing event for me. I lead a team of server developers in uh, the MySQL uh, development team at Oracle. Uh, we specialized in security, client-server protocol, performance monitoring, and, com and the component infrastructure that I'm going to talk about. I'm from Bulgaria, and I like working from uh, home as uh, MySQL culture is. So that's about me. Okay, so our agenda. First of all, the reasonable question. Why do we need another uh, infrastructure inside the server? We already have the plugins, so why? Uh, then I'm going to go over the architecture, so basically how I'm, I'm, we are trying to address the, the why question. And then I'll do the inventory, basically uh, what services and what interfaces do we have added to that uh, infrastructure. And then uh, I'll try to explain how to write your own component and how to add your own service and some tips and tricks in doing that. And to honor the place that we are in right now, I'm also going to give you some homework. So uh, whenever you see this uh, picture on the end of the slide, this is for you to basically read through and understand. I won't really have, uh, I wouldn't have the time to explain that in detail, but uh, I think that the examples are pretty self-explanatory. So please, uh, the slides are going to be on the FOSDEM uh, site and also on my slide share. So uh, please go over these more concrete examples. I, wanna, I, I don't have the time to go over the bits and bytes and the commas and the semicolons and all of that. Okay, so the big question here, why? Um, it's a historical question. So we have this great uh, infrastructure called plugin infrastructure. It uh, sustained MySQL through its initial phases. And it's really great and very convenient and very simple. The problem is that uh, we've accumulated some scenes, some technical debt. Uh, basically, uh, plugins are not respecting the infrastructure. And uh, that was all done in, uh, well, in the name of uh, achieving goals faster and, uh, well, basically delivering a product, really. Uh, also, uh, I think that uh, over the years, the plugin infrastructure became very complex because, well, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, so you want to hammer in and hammer out, basically. And it doesn't really work like that with code. So uh, the plugin infrastructure over the years uh, acquired some properties that are not really belonging to it, to the core infrastructure, really. So I thought by just, well, starting clean, I can uh, avoid those mistakes and uh, create a better layer and a better grouping and a better code division. So that's one of the important reasons why. Uh, that same uh, better code isolation and encapsulation, I know that's the holy grail of uh, complex uh, code development, but well, we should still strive to it. Another good thing is that uh, right now plugins uh, cannot really call each other. And that's mostly because we don't have the notion of dependencies between individual plugins. We don't know if a plugin A depends on a plugin B. Uh, and uh, then that infrastructure here is uh, trying to fix it. Also, uh, all components are EQ. 
uh, they can call each other and they can be called from all other components. So there is no central place of an arbiter that the, currently the MySQL server has for plugins. It's always plugins talk to the server and then the server talks back. Never plugins talking to each other directly, which is a limitation. Okay, so now, how do we want to solve that? That's a tour of history of MySQL componentization code, by the way. So it all started with this, well, big blob of code, which is the server binary, which has functionality in it. Later, uh, people realized that they want to be adding code a bit uh, simpler. So plugins appeared, and uh, server uses plugin APIs to call the plugins, and then plugins use plugin services to talk back to the server. That, that's pretty much it until five, seven, eight, yeah. Okay, so we, there, there were ideas uh, on how to make this thing better, but uh, we decided to start afresh. So in 8.0, we added this minimal chassis uh, thing which is basically a list of uh, service implementations and also a dynamic loader that loads and unloads components uh, from, from the, the server memory space, basically. Okay, uh, obviously this is not enough because this uh, dynamic loader is not a persistent thing. It does not track which components are loaded. Uh, it just loads and unloads components. So we added some uh, glue code, which is basically uh, the persistent dynamic loader. This is a layer on top of the dynamic loader that implements the persistency part using a, a MySQL server table, basically the MySQL components table. And we also implemented a uh, file scheme uh, handler, which allows uh, the persistent loader to load uh, components uh, from files, executable files. And this is inside the, the server functionality. It's out of the minimal chassis. So that's important why we have these extra layers. And this all is called the server component currently. So we, uh, well, thought we should start with this uh, basic component and, uh, and close all of the current server functionality. Right, so now the server functionality can consult the registry if, they, if it needs, uh, well, certain functionalities and use those. Uh, the problem is that uh, this is part of the technical depth. The, the plugins can also do that directly because they have all the symbols in the, in the server binary available to, the, to them. So uh, in an attempt to prevent that uh, extra acquisition of technical depth, I've uh, created this plugin service which uh, allows plugins to uh, access the, the data in the registry and the implementations in the registry. Uh, the idea being that uh, one could use that tool as a gradual migration device from plugins to components infrastructure. So uh, if you have existing plugins, you can gradually start, start moving towards components like that. Okay, and obviously the whole deal is adding new components which are outside of the server component and they are independent. So unlike plugins, those do not uh, have access to the server binary and uh, all of its symbols. So they are forced into using the, the registry and whatever services are uh, registered into it. And they can carry extra service implementations and register those in the registry. And because it's all in the registry, now pretty much Everybody can call everybody. Uh, they all have access to the registry. They, they have access to all the service implementations uh, defined in it. So basically, uh, that's how the equality of the components is achieved. They all just talk to the registry. That's the idea. OK, so some terminology here. Uh, so I have, I mentioned the dynamic loader. It loads and unloads components. So basically that part. So these yellow things are the, the actions and these other things are the object. 
it all uh, it starts with uh, the SQL command install and uninstall component, which basically instructs the persistent dynamic loader, uh, which encapsulates the actual dynamic loader to load and unload components uh, from the server uh, from the server into the server processor out of it. Uh, so, what's a component? A component contains code. That's the defining characteristics of it. Uh, and uh, this code is usually, a part of it is service implementations, which implement certain um, abstract APIs like service, uh, we call services, component services. And these services can be a number of things. Uh, I'll show you the, the inventory later. But uh, these are basically just abstract contracts between the consumers of functionality and uh, the producers of functionality or providers of functionality. And uh, these service implementations are registered into the registry. So uh, the components can basically fetch references from the registry to these uh, implementations either from their own component or from other components. So that's pretty much the, the ter terminology behind the component services. Okay, so now some um, homework slides. It's, it's all written down here. You want to uh, maybe check that later. Uh, okay, it's basically explained in a lot of detail. Right, so uh, the inventory, what, what is in that infrastructure right now? So we obviously have the registry and the dynamic loader, which are services by themselves, so you can access them like that. There's also the error logging subsystem. Um, currently, MySQL uh, uses that new infrastructure to produce its error logs. So you can basically have all of your components logging errors and so on. We support uh, defining system variables, status variables, user-defined functions, which is quite handy because you don't, if you have multiple user-defined functions, you can have a single component encompassing all of these. And then when you load the component, it would automatically register all of the UDFs for you. So kind of nice. Uh, performance schema is all supported through the component infrastructure. That's, that's a great achievement. So now you can also instrument your code and add your own tables that you want to instrument stuff in. Yep, uh, security context is available as a component service. You can manipulate, uh, well, who does your current process run as. There's password validation APIs, there's runtime error generation, there is work, uh, working with uh, collated strings inside MySQL and a lot more. It's 92 service headers, so please, please check, check most of them. Uh, so how to write your own components and services? Uh, I'll give you the executive summary given the, the time that I have. So basically, I have a bunch of utility macros. If you ever written a plugin, it's not very different. Uh, you can, of course, copy some of the existing components, plenty of examples, especially in the tests. We add tests for pretty much everything that we do. Also, copy the existing service definitions, because once you have your component, then you need to have it uh, define certain services that it provides to other components, basically. And there's plenty of examples for that, even uh, Doxygen section in the documentation. So just go ahead and, and copy it all. And then also, uh, unlike plugins, you need to compile it using a server source distribution. We are not yet at a point where you would take the binary and compile it. Also be careful, because they run in the system process, the server process, and uh, there's no boundaries, no checks and balances. So yeah. Apply care, basically. Okay, some more homework slides. I'm mentioning here the, direct, the directories. I have a skeleton for, for various things, basically. Yep, uh, more. Okay, so some tips and tricks. I'll be quick here. Uh, keep in mind that this is a binary interface. So you 
cannot really use the C++ way of doing things. You need to deal with uh, handles, you need to call uh, functions for these uh, handles to factory, ha to create those, to initialize those and so on. So it's kind of a bit of a different way of thinking. It, you can achieve similar results, it's just the, the, the tools are different. So keep that in mind. Uh, so here are some examples of related services. The very important concept is that unlike the plugin infrastructure where you were creating APIs with 300 methods, storage engine API, uh -huh. uh, now you can add these atomic, uh, logically independent service APIs that stack on top of each other. So if you have a table to drive through APIs, you don't have to have a single interface driving all the aspects of a table. You can have multiple ones, like uh, the one that just reads, the one that updates, and so on. And uh, you don't have to implement all of them for uh, tables that do, do not support writing, for example. And I, that's, a, that's a rough example. OK, another important concept. Uh, this is, again, on the related services. Uh, uh, it's important to be finding the right sets of services because if you have multiple services operating on a, on a handle, then you want to make sure that they all understand how this handle does work internally. Because if you get uh, two services from two different components, as is shown here, then uh, handles from this service produced by this service will obviously not work. Uh, in this implementation. So that's a, that's a, you need to be careful about that. Uh, so I have here an example how you overload services. Basically, uh, you use the service name. You don't use the, the implementation, concrete implementation. So whenever somebody uh, basically uh, defines a service, you, uh, you get to use the whatever implementation is here. But if s later a new component defines a new implementation of that service, uh, your code will still look the same, but it will uh, take this other new, this new uh, implementation instead of the, the original previously existing one. So that's a great concept. It allows you to overload and overwrite functionality that's even inside the, the server itself if you use components. So here are some random guidelines. Uh, please make sure you read, that, read those. Uh, try to use the component infrastructure macros. I know they are ugly, but uh, I do have plans for it, so please, uh, please help me out not to accrue more technical depth. Uh, also, taking references to services is expensive. It uh, involves taking a global log currently and then, well, increasing some uh, uh, counters and so on. So try to keep references for as long as you can, for as long as it makes uh, sense for you. Okay, some more, some more homework here. Uh, now what's next? Uh, we are at a state where we decided internally that we shall add no, no new plugin APIs and no new service APIs, and the goal is to deprecate the plugins. And we also want to start dividing the, the large blob of code that the MySQL server component currently is. So that's all from me. Uh, I have half 30 seconds for, for questions. Yes, Simon. Okay, so the question is whether we have, uh, we are considering versioning on the interfaces. No, uh, the idea is that, uh, yeah.